Right. As the uh, Forestry Commission Scotland archaeologist, I am responsible for providing information and advice in regard to the historic environment on Scotland's National Forest Estate uh, and for developing relevant guidance and seeking opportunities in regard to best practice conservation management. Uh, this paper uh, and the supporting exhibition highlights a number of recent archaeological measured surveys uh, we've undertaken over the last few years. Uh, the common thread is of innovative new survey techniques combined with an aesthetic illustrative me methodology uh, of beautiful pictures designed to encourage and inspire. Uh, for I believe that the true heroes of Scottish archaeology are not skeletons, artefacts or eco-facts, but the sites themselves. Archaeology is a very visual activity and almost always involves photography, measured survey techniques and informed illustration. Uh, aerial and terrestrial laser scanning, rectified photography, terrain modelling and low altitude aerial photography by microcopter combine with archive images and traditional topographic survey to create exciting new angles from which to appreciate the past. Uh, FCS are committed to undertaking conservation management, condition monitoring uh, uh, and archaeological recording are our most significant historic assets and to helping to develop, share and promote best practice historic environment conservation management. We are proud to support the Scottish Historic Environment Strategy, uh, the Emerging Scottish Archaeology Strategy and often seek to contribute to SCARF, the Scottish Archaeological Research Framework. Good archaeological illustration helps to consolidate understanding by encouraging the active participation of the audience you have to think to understand. It supports effective archaeological analysis and can greatly enhance the historic environment records. From sub-millimetre accuracy through stone-by-stone -stone recording to landscape-scale terrain modelling, these site-based studies let their pictures tell the story. My playground is the National Forest Estate, the largest single public land resource held by the Scottish Government. The National Forest Estate comprises over 650,000 hectares, or almost 9% of Scotland, and over 35% of Scotland's woodlands. Around two-thirds of the estate is woodland and one-third is open ground, including agricultural land, mountains, peat bogs, water bodies and coast. And there are over 350 designated historic assets and 12,000 archaeological features on record. And this is one of them, the impressive hill fort of Castle Oar in the White Esk Valley. One of the uh, main pa uh, panels we have here, uh, highlighting the, the, the ramparts uh, with Ed, Ed Martin, the microcopter uh, flyer and photographer, centre stage in one of the hill forts. Uh, microcopter photography uh, enables huge flexibility in recording a site. You can pick the weather, you can pick the day, you, you don't need to... Um, uh, you can, you can uh, take obliques from all angles of the site um, and you can produce rectified photography. But moving on, I was thinking, what else can we do to Castle Ore, which has had uh, a, a wonderful Royal Commission plan in 1997. So we created a terrain model um, uh, uh, by uh, taking thousands and thousands of points um, and uh, dropped, draped the Royal Commission plan on top, uh, which I think is a really unusual way of, of presenting uh, what was uh, a flat uh, plan um, and giving it a little bit of, by, by hill shading, um, you're, you're able to, 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 to give bulk uh, and uh, uh, an image, uh, an impression of the, the scale of the uh, defences. In terms of terrain modelling, we can then drape all sorts of interesting things on top of the terrain model. This is uh, Craig Fadrig, a hill fort above Inverness, very close to my heart as I'm based up there. Um, we recently had Rubicon Heritage, who have been creating these terrain models, uh, uh, undertake the fieldwork and then we draped the recent Royal Commission uh, plan on top. Uh, the Royal Commission plan um, was undertaken uh, uh, by uh, John Cheriff and Co uh, with uh, Alison uh, McKenzie, is it John? I can't remember now. McKay, thank you very much. Um, an IFA uh, 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 placement uh, and we gave her a little bit extra time to do some archival research uh, and for the first time, uh, a paper is in, in uh, pro progress, uh, which, which explains all the various inter interventions and trenches and all sorts that have ha happened to the site. Uh, in, and I, you can see the shaded area at the top. I'm going to try and highlight it. Ah, yes. Uh, having looked at the site, you can actually start to pick out uh, the old uh, trenches uh, and exposed areas that have never actually been properly written up. Um, but again, you're taking a two-dimensional uh, plan 
uh, beautiful as it is, but giving it that, that extra ang angle um, by, by dropping on a terrain model, and a hill shaded terrain model. Uh, what else can you put on a terrain model? Uh, I'm particularly proud of this one. Uh, this is the Ordnance Survey uh, in 1857. It was the first and only uh, record of uh, Wallace's house, which is a promontory fort uh, in uh, Dumfriesshire. Uh, the fort itself is maybe 40 metres across, um, uh, a huge ditch uh, and bank uh, uh, protecting it um, on, on the, the, sort of the landward side before it drops off into the two burns. Um, but it, even though it's over 150 years old, it is a beautiful plan of a fine site. Um, but by, giving it, by adding the terrain model to it, um, I think we've, uh, um, well, adding it to the terrain model uh, gives an impressive, a real impressive uh, um, uh, image of the, the scale of the, the, the rampart itself. Uh, blending old with new. Uh, this is, uh, a, what else again can you add to a terrain model? This is the uh, resistivity survey undertaken in 2013 by the Edinburgh Archaeological Field School. Shout out, there's someone, someone are here. Um, we dropped it onto the terrain model. It is of uh, Castle Greg, a small Roman fortlet um, near uh, Lanark, I think. Uh, and again, um, it, it's an, it maybe hasn't added very much to the understanding of the resistivity survey, but it's an interesting way, uh, an unusual way, of illustrating uh, uh, the, the technique. Aerial laser scanning, uh, or LIDAR, uh, it's a wee, bit, a wee bit dark, I'm afraid, um, but this is uh, Rossell Township up in Sutherland. Um, we decided to uh, try and survey the, the area, which is about uh, one square kilometre, uh, with uh, super high resolution uh, uh, aerial laser scanning, which is around about 12 points per metre, um, which is much, much higher than you would normally get for uh, laser, uh, aerial laser scanning, which often comes out at between two and four points per metre. Um, so this, is, this has resulted in a really, really detailed terrain model um, of a, a huge landscape. Uh, you can see uh, rig and furrow, perfectly picked out. You have uh, buildings and enclosures uh, all over the landscape. Um, and this is something that we, we, we decided to trial um, because the, the interpretation on site, there's a, 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 a walk that trails all the way around uh, the buildings and the landscape, and it needed refresh because it was a few years old. Um, and I thought, well, if, if we can start pull, pulling bits of uh, imagery, imagery out of uh, the raw science, which is the, the terrain model like this, um, then we can tell two stories, not only uh, the story of the township uh, and the buildings and the foundations that are there, but also the archaeology, of the, of the, the, uh, the science of recording. Uh, so that's one of the projects for this year. But I was looking at the data, uh, and I was thinking, how best to try and explain this uh, uh, the, the various different images you can get using uh, the, the, terrain, the, the terrain model from ALS. And on the uh, left-hand side, you have uh, ele oops, an elevation by height. Uh, so um, uh, the, the, the different um, height of the, the terrain is, is illustrated in different colours. We'll come back to this uh, when you get to a more site-based uh, scale. Um, and it works quite well, but it's not to everybody's taste. Um, but the black and white, obviously, uh, is, is exceptional in terms of uh, hill shading, and you, you can, you can t uh, uh, illuminate it from many different angles, as uh, Graham showed with uh, the stones this morning. Uh, but it, coll collecting the, 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 uh, the aerial photography at the same time um, enables us to, 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 to drop colour onto it, but it also does, does um, demonstrate how difficult it is to see things um, from an aerial photograph compared to the... Uh, the beauty of the aerial laser scanning. I was wondering how best to, I was playing about with the, uh, my job is, there's a lot of playing about and having fun, my job, I have to admit, I do apologise. So I was, I was looking at the terrain model and I decided to switch off the mesh, the, 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 the surface model, uh, and, and all I'm, I was left with was the, the, the points, um, but I, I kept the colour on, uh, and by keeping the colour, um, uh, you, you retain a little bit more visual impact. Uh, and, and here you have uh, a longhouse, uh, which is maybe 12 metres long, uh, but picked out um, in a landscape that you're actually looking at very, very obliquely. You can even pull out, start to pull out the, tr the trees and the bushes on the horizon there. But it just, if every point has been fired from the aerial laser scanner from the air, and it just it gives you an impression, an immediate impression of the amount of points covering that terrain. Uh, and, um, 
a wonderful image. I'm very proud of it. And it was picked up by the BBC recently and put on their website as part of the Scottish News for the day. It must have been a quiet day, mind you, but at least they did. Um, so going from a landscape scale uh, to a uh, sub-millimetre accuracy, um, this was a project looking at the, the prehistoric rock art at uh, Ormeg in the Kilmartin Valley. Um, uh, again, uh, we, we asked AOC to, 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 to laser scan it. They did the, the, the work in 2007. Um, and what we wanted to do was laser scan it again, perhaps testing new equipment, but also to see if we could pick out any uh, erosion, if we can use, start to use this technology uh, for condition monitoring at a site that we had only recently um, st stripped away from, from trees. It had previously been set within a, um, a quite a sheltered um, and enclosed um, uh, clearing within the forestry. Um, whereas now it's, it's, it's exposed within its landscape glory, but it's also exposed to the, the, the elements. Uh, so you have here uh, the, uh, the laser scanned mesh. Uh, so that's a, a, a surface model created by uh, a, a very intensive uh, sub-millimeter um, laser scanning of the sort that Graham talk, talked about this morning with the Dundee stones. Um, but I do also have uh, the, the photogrammetric mesh at the top uh, and then the photogrammetric mesh, the grayscale uh, and then with the lichens on top. And this is a much quicker and cheaper method. Uh, and it turns out that although the laser scan mesh with the color is undoubtedly, uh, produces the goods in terms of illustration. Uh, and if I wanted to illustrate rock art, then that's the method I would be going for. Um, it didn't work very well in terms of condition monitoring because the, the, the growth of lichen um, made it very, it hits, began to hide uh, um, sub-millimeter uh, erosion. Um, which may or may not be happening. At least we know that there's no catastrophic erosion, but you can probably tell that by eye. Um, but the, the photogrammetric te textured mesh at the bottom um, would be a more rapid, uh, cheaper way of, of doing uh, rock art survey on a grand scale. So it's, it's, uh, by doing this sort of thing, we're trying to help push forward uh, our knowledge of uh, techniques and methodology. Uh, but you're always, always keeping an eye out for, for really decent and beautiful images um, and... Uh, AOC came up with the goods in this, in this case. Um, you have the laser scanned mesh in grayscale, uh, where you can hill shade it, you can shade it from any, many different angles, uh, combined very unusually uh, in the same image uh, with uh, the textured mesh, so you've got the color on as well. And I, a really unusual image uh, to, to display the techniques. So, moving again, changing scale. Um, I was uh, on fieldwork in uh, Bacharn um, in Aberdeenshire, which is in your bankery, um, going to look at a new acquisition. This was a, 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 a farm that we'd acquired and we're going to plant various bits of. Um, and uh, there was, uh, I'd heard that there was a very impressive cairn, and so I went to go and have a look. Um, and lo and behold, it was a tremendous great heap of stones. This was maybe 30 metres in diameter and five metres high. But I thought to myself, I, I've, I've, and I've seen quite a lot of cairns, um, I'm thinking, this is a very fine, rounded profile. This is quite unusual. Um, is, could it be that it is sitting on a platform of some kind uh, that, that's holding this profile or has helped it retain its profile over the years? Um, so the, the laser scan proved that, yes, there is a, a, a terrace around it or a platform that is built on rather than simply... Uh, clearance um, over the years um, piled up against this huge cairn. But when the image came back the first time, I thought that was a little bit too multicoloured, even for me, and I do like multicolour. Um, that's the section one, which is I've brought back there for you. So you can begin to see what we're trying to use the uh, laser scan image to, 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 to visually impress upon, which is the, the changing height, the height by elevation. Um, but by, by tweaking the colour into a more gentle, or well, eye of sorum, some have said, but um, a, a more gentle height. You, you, you do get the domed profile uh, um, without the, the multicolour, the psychedelic effect of the multicolour. So again, we're, we're, we're thinking how best to uh, present uh, and illustrate the archaeology that we're, on, we're, we're doing. But I'm, I, I like playing with this stuff, as you know. Um, I, I took the site in profile at sunset uh, and in the point cloud um, and I've put them together um, and I think that's quite a, uh, a stunning image. Uh, again, you might be wondering why there's marmite. Why did I use marmite at the, at the start of this talk? I think this is, you're beginning to know why I, well, how I'm using marmite. You either love it or you hate it. 
Uh, moving back to uh, blending techniques uh, and the importance of blending techniques, um, this, was, uh, this is one of the, the finest sites that we have on the National Forest Estate. It's a remarkably well-preserved brock out at Loch Alsh uh, um, uh, on, the, on the way to um, Sky. Um, it's unconsolidated, so it's, it's not one of uh, a, a, a property in care of Historic Scotland, for example, which um, uh, within the last, uh, over the course of its life, has been, has been mortared together uh, and is, is a presented monument. This is a monument in the wild, as it were. The, 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 it is slowly falling down, unfortunately. We're thinking how best to record it and then what to do next. Um, so, holistic or total survey. We uh, undertook uh, low-altitude aerial photography. We undertook laser scanning, where you can see the tremendous uh, and very iconic triangular lintel overlooking the, the, the entranceway. Uh, the laser scanning was presented as height by elevation, um, uh, but also as a, a more simple, simplified uh, and traditional style for e easy publication and uh, typo typo typograph typographic comparison. Looking into the archive, very important when you're, you're thinking about um, what, what sort of things are you looking for to, uh, uh, to display within the, the, the survey. Um, we came across the fact that the site had been uh, originally surveyed in 1880 by Sir Henry Dryden, the antiquarian, which we'll come to in a bit, but also in 1949 uh, by the Secretary of the Commission, uh, Angus Graham, on his holidays. Um, and he had, he had drawn a very unusual and very striking um, interior uh, elevation, an, an unfurled interior elevation. Um, and so I went back to, to, to the surveyors and asked them, to, can, we, can we try and replicate this? Um, and uh, a very, very good job. I've picked the, the multicolored version, but it, it works very well in grayscale as well. Um, but it's, it's nice to try and uh, replicate and, uh, and, and influence, not influence, um, uh, infer and, and, and celebrate past surveyors. Uh, obviously, producing black and white drawings is also very, very important, and we're handing these to a conservation architect this year uh, as part of a project to try and work out how best to repin uh, the structure and keep it from uh, uh, keep it in its current position, uh, current state. So, its archaeological measures survey for its, its uh, for, for my case, its ultimate aim, which is to inform conservation management. Uh, but by going back into the archive as well, you can start to look at what, what, what existing photography there is. Uh, so on the, the right-hand side, uh, you have a view of the entrance uh, by, undertaken by uh, Angus Graham uh, in 1949 um, and myself in 2011. And I just thought I'd blend the two together, two views in time of the same view. Uh, it's very important to ask your surveyors to... Uh, to, to, to look at these uh, archive images and try and get them to replicate it so you can start to build up that condition monitoring over time, informing it. And again, I, I guess we're, I'm beginning to play, but here we have uh, Sir Henry Dryden's uh, image, uh, his survey uh, of 1880, uh, and we have AOC's survey of 2011. Uh, old meeting new, uh, and I like to think of this as bringing the colour back in to archaeological survey. Um, because of publication techniques over the 20th century, it's been very necessary to be thinking and drawing in black and white. Uh, and I think laser scanning has certainly uh, brought colour back into this, sort of, uh, um, into this sort of plan. And by exploring the archive, you can also... Uh, sorry, I'll go back. I'm not, uh, when you're looking to think of a holistic survey, um, the, 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 the money involved in getting archaeologists on site, that's the, that's the, 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 the bulk of the cost. The actual archaeology when you're on site um, is, is uh, obviously cost, but the bulk of the cost is getting them there. So in terms of thinking, you always seek opportunities to broaden the fieldwork objectives. So while um, myself and Ed were on site at Castle Grugig, uh, look, taking photographs by the air with the microcopter, we looked around at other sites as well. We tried to enhance the historic environment record by taking our time and going to pho photograph other things. And as you saw with, with Tom's talk this morning, uh, we seek to try to do that uh, on, on many occasions, and the Park Nuke Stone Circle was one where we did in partnership because the archaeologists were on site. Holistic survey. Cracknish Dune is one of my, my favourite uh, uh, sites because it was where, we did, where I discovered the joy of low-altitude aerial photography. Um, that's me there looking very pleased with myself. Um, the, the machine lifts up um, and, uh, and starts to circle this wonderful dune 
uh, built uh, on uh, the uh, north side of Glenbrittle um, on Sky. Uh, with the oblique, oblique low altitude pictures, you can have 360 de degree flexibility. You can start to pick out um, and hover and, and, and ask the, the photographer to take more care to, 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 um, to re on site. You're looking at the details on the screen. Um, so we, no we noticed that uh, obviously you have this massive uh, ra uh, main wall, but there's also another one running around here. And I, I was trying to get him to pick up as much as possible as, as you're heading around the outside of the, of the, the knoll itself. Um, the poster itself has been designed. I'm now going to be very. You have the uh, to try and lead people through the um, through the, the the process, and people can understand the the oblique, and they start to learn about the vertical and the, the information that they can gain from the vertical, and then they can begin to read the traditional archaeological plan, and equally the uh, the laser scan, which you see here, um, really really showing the the value of uh, displaying information by height uh, as the as the rocky knoll leaps out. From the screen, equally you can uh, the, you can you can start to build terrain terrain models, and in this case uh, we have uh, just had the the whole of the Glenbrittle Peninsula um, uh, uh, undertaken aerial laser scan, and so we're going to try and blend the two the terrestrial laser scanning with the aerial laser scanning. So I'll, I hopefully will come back to talk about that at another conference. But I think for me it's all about using the image. Um, uh, the, uh, the image to make, a, to make a powerful statement about the work we do and the importance of the monuments that we're dealing with. Um, and I, I'm, 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 I'm really proud of some of these, these, these big posters because of the, the impact that they can have uh, is, uh, I, as a group um, or indeed just taken down in one at a forest district office. So the district know why we're doing this. I'm trying to explain to it's an internal audience as well as an external audience. Uh, you can use the images for, for a wide variety of different purposes as well. Uh, we took the, the whole suite to the Highland Historic, sorry, the Highland Family Heritage Festival, um, and I had uh, a variety of uh, jigsaws made, uh, knowing that, again, it's a little bit like Marmite. Some people love jigsaws, some people don't. Um, but those that do spend very happy 45 minutes to an hour trying to recreate the jigsaws and, and learn about the survey techniques. Um, it turns out that um, the laser scan of Cracknish is very easy, um, uh, whereas the vertical aerial photograph of Cracknish is very, very difficult. Um, but I'm able to t teach kids about the, the survey techniques. So, archaeological measures survey is an important visual tool that can inform and encourage sustainable conservation management. I believe the objectives of archaeological measures survey and visualisation include enhancing the archaeological records, uh, seeking a creative response that is both function, functional and aesthetic, um, trying to collect baseline information that informs condition monitoring, mon management and allows detailed condition monitoring over time. Also to encourage professional CPD, uh, um, continuing professional development and broaden fieldwork objectives wherever possible um, in terms of uh, going that extra stage and trying to get some of this work published, for example, um, on the, uh, uh, by the younger archaeologists that are undertaking the work looking for other, other sites nearby where you could, you could take the survey and to visibly demonstrate and then conform the, uh, confirm the importance of a site, uh, particularly to the land managers, my, my colleagues. Uh, but equally also to seek to enhance the presentation of both methodology and archaeology together. By commissioning low-altitude aerial photography and detailed archaeological measured surveys, Forestry Commission Scotland is also helping to further develop techniques such as laser scanning and its presentational methodology. Integrating archaeological measure survey with other techniques, uh, such as excavation, aerial photography, geophysical survey, uh, can realise useful additional information. And I believe that measured survey and visualisation are both very important tools within the archaeologist's arsenal. Thank you very much. <laughs>